Hey there everyone, it's Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com. Now, if you follow my channel, you'll know that RC submarines are kind of my thing. Um, I buy and sell a lot of boats. I built a lot of boats, but uh, it's kind of my business. And so when an opportunity comes along to grab one, it's not very often that I say no, uh, particularly if the price is right. So I was approached by a gentleman out of Germany who came by an RC submarine. Uh, didn't know anything about it. It was a friend who passed away and he kind of inherited it. Uh, and so he gave me a deal that was just too good to refuse. Uh, a $350 complete RC submarine. I've got it on the bench and I'm gonna take a look at it in real time along with you guys. Let's see what I got for my 350 bucks. So this is it. We literally just unpacked it from the cardboard, put it on the bench, and that is all we've done to it. Um, a few things that I do know, this is an angle of Germany Patrick Henry submarine. Now I'm not intimately familiar with this particular boat. I've built lots of angle boats in the past, but more of their modern offerings. This I believe was one of their original boats and uh, it was very popular kind of back in the day. I couldn't guess as to what sort of era this would be. I'm gonna guess maybe in the 90s. Um, I have no idea what's inside. Um, I'm gonna assume there's a lot of really old electronics and that kind of thing, but we're gonna take a look at it together. Um, let's, take, let's, let's do this in real time. So we're, we're missing these hold down bolts. So this deck just lifts off. It's a fiberglass deck. What do we got in here? There's a, there is an electronic, oh, it's like a little uh, light socket for an incandescent bulb, like a screw in light bulb. And I think this is the power for it. It's like a telephone cord that must have attached to this at one time. So there was a light right there by the looks of it. Interesting. Okay, cool. Um, fiberglass deck. The details actually look cool. And you know what? This weathering looks like a ton of fun. It's like, it's like pre-weathered. Maybe, maybe we don't even do anything to it. That'd be kind of interesting. All right. So that's the upper deck. Now underneath in typical angle form is, um, a, a metal deck and you got all these hold down studs. And in theory, there's a there is a seal underneath. Now this is like wedged on there, so we're gonna have to do some prying to try and get this off. There we go. So, oh, there's the connector for the lights. And this looks like this is like foam rubber for a seal. And that goes on to these metal Okay, so that's the foam seal presses down onto this little ridge underneath. And this, this feels awfully heavy. It might be aluminum. Probably aluminum. All right, what do we got in here? We got a switch and we have a lot of foam. A lot of foam. Oh, the whole thing was boxed with jam-folded chunks of foam. This is what you would call solid state. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out what we got going on here. So, I can see in the bow and the stern, we've got two piston tanks. These are Engel um, piston tanks. Um, this is like a relay block of some kind. Maybe an electronic switch. We're gonna have to do some, some research here. We got a some huge old old solid state servos this one's loose kind of broken free and there's a, a linkage rod way down in the bottom there These hoses are still attached although they feel a little crusty and the uh the piston tanks a little loose but this looks like one screw and probably the whole thing comes out um what do we got some really interesting stuff in here. On off switch. 
for the receiver, okay. All, all of the connectors, I assume this is probably like a uh, ballast control module of some kind right here. And it looks like it's an actual servo that pushes down on um, some relay switches. Some endpoint switches. The power for the piston tank is not connected to anything. Oh, no, it would go right there. I can see there's little like connectors in the bottom. Actually, all things considered, this is a fairly simple boat. Oh, here's a rudder. This is the rudder, it goes in the back there. We'll take a look at that in a minute. But actually, this is this is look interesting stuff on here. So there's a there's a, this is being used as a switch. And you've got all of these different contacts on here that are bolting on the on the side. And I'm not sure what that controls. I would obviously say it would be a good idea to replace a lot of these uh, electronics with some modern ones. It actually just so happens I've got brand new electronics including a T-Max dive system um, or a TAE system that would uh, would work in here. We'll see. It wouldn't take much to gut this boat uh, at all actually. So let's take a look in the in the back here. So there's a there's like a plate that comes off and we've got uh, this is the main drive shaft and it looks like this prop goes in the middle and then this gear lines up with that one so this is like a probably like six to one or uh, gear reducer so the small gear is driving the big gear because um, it's probably I assume there's a motor right in the back here somewhere hiding behind the piston tank um, that drives this. This is nice and free spinning and um, this is typically the way that, that Engel does this. So this is a, a piece of silicone tube that goes over a brass tube and a brass rod and that's what creates the seal. I wouldn't be surprised if this still worked actually. And then we got our dive planes. It just looks like these snap on. They probably just snapped off. And then that rudder that we saw earlier would go up like this. They just kind of clip on there with these little plastic hinges. Um, but all the all the linkages and everything are in there. I don't know how well they work or if they work. This got cracked, which is not a big deal. It looks like that would be easy to fix. So, yeah, there you go. Um, it's a dry hull boat. This whole section is is dry. Um, stays dry the whole time and I'm gonna guess oh I'm gonna guess this thing probably weighs about 50 pounds um, because you got a whole mess of lead in the keel uh, that you need to offset all of that buoyancy so that's one of the things about a dry hull boat versus a wet hull boat um, they typically end up weighing more so that's what we've got to work with um, I don't, again, I don't, I don't think it would be much to, to take this out. And uh, lots of options, actually. You could just gut it and put a standard cylinder in here. Um, or uh, I wouldn't be surprised if these piston tanks were still completely viable. Um, just grab some new electronics from Engel and you'd have, uh, you know, a modern drive system for this uh, vintage RC submarine. So there you go. Um, 350 bucks. That's what uh, I ended up with. I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think that was money well spent. Well, um, you know, I think a couple weekends worth of work and you, you'd have a functional boat again. So there you go. Thought I'd share with you my little uh, afternoon adventure unpacking my, my recent purchase. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, be interested to hear from you or if you have any more background about the Patrick Henry kit. Uh, from Engel back in the day. Um, but with that, I will let you go. This is uh, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus, drydocks.com. Thanks for joining me, and we'll catch you next time.